before we get to Brian's closet, I want to focus on the term closet. The definition for closet is a wardrobe large enough to walk through. Now, if you think about a closet, I can't imagine letting my daughter right there just walk through my closet, but she can't buy an outfit, wear an outfit, borrow an outfit. She can just walk through the closet. To me, diversity is we might invite somebody to our closet, but inclusion is they can wear any outfit I have in my closet. That's what we wanted to do with Brian's Closet. When we talked about diversity in our community, the need for Brian's Closet, too often, unfortunately, you see clip art, percentages, and no faces. We needed some faces to put with diversity in Clay County, especially because unfortunately, we have a high percentage of people who are food insecure. Just in this room, 17 of you might not know where your next meal is going to come from. And if this room was full of children, unfortunately, about 19% of you, 19 sitting right here, would not know where their next meal is going to come from. Those are people we're talking about. The percentages do not tell the story, but the people certainly do. Their faces tell us the story of what they're living every day. These two statements, unfortunately, have something in common. Poverty is not a lack of character. It's a lack of money, a lack of opportunity, a lack of investment. It's when society turn it, turns its back and makes you invisible. It would be too easy to say that I feel invisible. Instead, I feel painfully visible and entirely ignored. Unfortunately, the term invisible is in both of those statements. Many of the people who are under that percentage feel invisible every day in our communities. Watch this video and do what it asks you to do. This is a test. How many times does the white team pass the rubber band ball? Go! At 13 passes, you are correct. But did you see the black belt gorilla? Go! Absolutely. The point is, those percentages we talk about all the time, many of our guests feel invisible every day. You might walk right by them. You might not even smile at them. That is what many people in these percentages feel like. So what can we do? For us, when we moved to Vermilion, we met that amazing man on the left, John Lushball, and the community members that helped build the welcome table here in Vermilion. It is amazing. It is not just inviting somebody to the party, it is truly asking them to dance. They serve a dinner every week. And it's not just about giving a dinner to somebody, it's about build, building a community. It is as if we are asking them into our home for dinner. In some of our other places we've lived, we've lived in seven states, and we have volunteered I always felt this was an us versus them situation. I am on one side spooning out food to the other side. We were not a we. 
It was truly us and them. Here in Vermilion, the welcome table, it is we. You are greeted as you walk in the front door as if you're at Red Steakhouse. You are seated. We have waiters and waitresses asking you what you would like. If it is not up to your standards, it is sent back. You can have seconds. It is totally an experience where you are part of a community. Where else in town can you have maybe the USC football players sing happy birthday to you, celebrate your anniversary? That is what happens in a we situation. This hit me like a ton of bricks. We knew we wanted our guests to feel seen. In this movie, the man up top is homeless. And he says, let me ask you, when you give a homeless man a plate of food or a dollar, what do you think you're doing? Most of us in this room would say, we're helping somebody if we do that. Well, he said, a plate of food don't change nothing. He's still homeless. All you're doing is saying, you ain't invisible. I see you. It sounds so simple. You say, ah, no, I'd see somebody. I I'd address them. Well, you didn't see the gorilla walking across the room. So we might say we'll see them, but do we really? This quote signifies what we are doing in Vermilion, at least. I remember always saying to myself that when I get big, I'm not going to go to bed hungry. We're doing a pretty good job with that. I'm not going to wear hand-me-down clothes. That's the piece we are missing. So when my brother passed away, a schoolmate sent this letter to my sister-in-law. And I highlighted, he was listening. There was always room for one more. I'll be your friend, and I'm a better person for knowing him. Wouldn't that be great if somebody wrote that about us? So what we did was create Brian's closet. So I kind of look at it as if we go out for dinner and dancing, that's the welcome table in Brian's closet. We're truly asking people to dance. Who's got a picture like this in their family album wearing their brother's or sister's clothes? OK, I do. And I only had brothers, so you can imagine what the pictures look like. <laughs> That's a hand-me-down. I've worked in too many school districts where the children have YMCA t-shirts that were donated by somebody, and they did not participate in that sport, but it's truly a hand-me-down. And that's how they feel coming to school. In Brian's closet, you don't see that kind of face when our guests are leaving. Never underestimate the power of a good outfit on a bad day. I loved our previous speaker. You feel like a million bucks when you got to pick out your own outfit. And you know you're going to feel good that next day. Our guests coming in are greeted at the door with shopping bags. They then have their own personal stylist. Wouldn't that be great if we all had that? That's what our neighbors deserve. That's the faces of our stylist and our shoppers. I don't think they look like the little boy with hand-me-downs on them. That's the difference, I believe, when you get to pick out your own outfit. It sounds simple. But golly, does it make a day much better. Many of our guests have told us they truly feel invisible. And I love this saying up here, I feel like I'm a speck of dust floating in the air. But now I truly believe people feel like we see them when we are helping them find an outfit. Here's more of our guests. This is something that shocked us. I believe it was almost a semicircle. We felt we were doing a great job feeding and clothing and becoming a community. We never imagined our guests would feel the need to pay it forward. This is what it feels like for our guests and for our recipients. When a child gives you a gift, even if, if it's a rock they just picked up, exude gratitude. It might be the only thing they have to give, and they have chosen to give it to you. We got a letter about this lovely orange dress and one of our favorite shoppers. 
her teacher told us, my student went to Brian's closet and found a dress for me. She was thrilled to give it to me today. It was the perfect dress for me. In fact, I had donated that dress to Brian's closet. I told her it was lovely, can't wait to wear it. You should have seen her face. We're allowing them to give blessings to others. That was crazy awesome, because we thought we were doing a great job here, and now it's becoming a complete circle. She was able to give a gift to somebody else. And if you could see the thousands of items we have Brian's closet, there was some divine intervention for that girl to find an orange dress for that teacher, and she gave it to Brian's closet. Gal on the left, one of our favorite shoppers, Miss Sue, she wanted to give back. She knitted my husband a scarf. He will love it forever. That was her rock to give to my husband, Moose. On the right, she wanted to give back. She went home, found some toys, some trinkets she knew our kids would love. She felt like a million dollars to be able to give back to somebody else. This is the other piece that kind of needs to be talked about when we talk about diversity and inclusion and our guest at Brian's Closet, you have to be able to turn the first page of somebody's book to get past maybe their outwards appearance and figure out their story. These are four of our faves. You might know on her cover that she grew up in a state hospital and school lived there, if you turn the cover of her book, you'd find out she had a licensed candy business in Yankton for 23 years. She bought the candy and sold for the same amount of money. She just wanted to make people happy. At the park in Yankton, she found people were selling drugs and she did not feel that was appropriate in her town. She turned them in. She shut down a drug ring there. And then she complained to Richard Nixon about the war, the Vietnam War, and he wrote her a letter. I don't have a letter from President Nixon. You had to turn the cover of her book to find out her story. She's the one who monthly brings something back for the kids. Jean and Jack, you might know on their cover, their best friends they want to eat every week together at the welcome table. You open their book, they're both Vietnam veterans, and Jack on the right is the commander of the VFW. He wanted to continue to give back to his community. And Tim. Timmy showed up a couple months ago. He has tattoos on his face, horns tatted on, and tattoos everywhere. He came up and said, Carrie, I need a job. I said, great, what do you like to do? He goes, well, look it. I said, I don't care about that. What do you do? What are you good at? He goes, well, kind of good at art. I'm like, OK, could you bring something? And maybe we can, I would say that's a little better than kind of good at art. OK? He's got a skill that many companies would love if they just opened the cover of his book. pretty sure we can prove that there's no ordinary people in our lives. If you just give them a chance, everybody has something to offer here. If we get past the cover of some of the books. It wouldn't be fair if I acted like this was my Brian's closet or my parents, my daughter, my husband. This is a community, Brian's Closet. Hundreds of people from all walks of life. I will come home every day, there's bags of clothes on my front porch, trying to give back in that circle. Volunteers every month helping us make it happen. People want to help others. They just need a way to do it. Every day, I have my brother's thumbprint on this necklace, and it's our fingerprints don't fade from the lives we've touched. Many days you have no idea who you touched. You might have said hi to somebody in the store who had a really crappy day, but you just said hi. 
or you sat down for two minutes at the welcome table and talked to somebody that nobody has even given eye contact the entire week. Sometimes our volunteers, it's a little challenge. They're not used to just sitting down having dinner with somebody they don't know. But trust me, it changes them as they leave the Brian's Closet or the welcome table after they sat down and challenged themselves to open somebody's cover of their book and get to know them. So, out on the front table during intermission, I would love for you to take one of the Brian's Closet postcards, not for what it says here, but on the back. All of our guests put their fingerprints. I want you to put this up somewhere great in your house, your office. Every day, try to look at somebody new. Talk to them for five minutes. You have no idea the impact you're probably going to make on someone. Thank you.